Hello folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to create this flip card effect with HTML and CSS. So when you mouse over the card, it flips over and it shows you some additional information. So let's get straight into it. I've got my index.html file here and I'm using sublime text. So if I just type HTML and hit tab, it's going to autocomplete this skeleton structure for me. So first of all, I'll give it a title. I'll call it flip card and let's just save and refresh this. Make sure it's pulling through. Okay, that's fine. And now I can set up the structure of the document. Now this isn't going to have a whole lot in it, but it's just going to be a bunch of divs all within each other. So I'll explain these as I go. Now the first one is going to be the container. So I'll set up a div class container and within the container is going to be the actual card itself. So I'll have another div with a class of card, but then the card has a front and a back. So you have to set them up as individual classes again. So the first one I'll set up as front. Now this doesn't have any content, so this will just be a closed div. And underneath that, I'm going to have another one, which will be the back of the card. And in this one, I will have a little bit of content. So I'm just going to have a H1, which says back of card and a paragraph, which says additional info on the back of the card. Close that one out and then I can start closing all my divs. Okay, save that. And there we go. So the content is pulling through and that's actually the HTML pretty much done. Now, I've got my empty style sheet here. I just need to make sure that I'm linking it through to the HTML document. So right at the top here, underneath the title tag, I'm going to say link. And again, I'll autocomplete. So link rel is style sheet and the file name is style.css. So in my case, both of these files are in the same folder, so I can just call it the name of it and it will load through. Okay, so that's the HTML pretty much done. So I can move on to the style sheet. Now there's a couple of things I want to reset first of all. So I'm going to overwrite some default values by saying margin is zero, padding is zero, and the box sizing is border box. So when I save that, you'll notice that the default values have disappeared and everything is bunched up together. Next, we'll style the body. First, I'll give it a height of 100 VH, which just means it takes up the entirety of the vertical viewport. And we'll say overflow is hidden. And for the background, well, I'm going to use a linear gradient here. So it's going to be a 45 degree gradient. And the two colors that I used in the demo are this blue color and kind of pinkish, pinkish purple. Save that. Okay, that's looking good. And now let's just set a font here. So we'll say font family of Helvetica sans serif and we'll give it a color of RGB 211, 211, 211. So just a not quite fully white, just a very light gray color. And for now that's fine, that's everything I need for the body. Then I need to style the container. So the container is where the card is going to sit and all this really needs at the moment is a width and a height. So I'll say 350 pixels and height is going to be 500 pixels. Next, I want to style the card. So if I just go back to the HTML for a second, I've got this order here with my container, within it is the card, and then within the card is the front and back faces. So actually the card doesn't really have a whole lot on it either. It just has a height, which is going to be 100%, and a width of 100%. Now because it's within the container class, it just takes the same sizes as what that has. So that's the card for now. And then I do the same with the front and back of the card. So there's going to be a few things that are common to both of them. And well, the size is one of them. So I'll say height is 100% and width is 100%. So I keep repeating this, but essentially it just means it kind of cascades down through each of the classes. So I've set my container to that size and everything that's within it is going to be the same size as that. So when I save that, you see that it's moved, but it's not quite clear why. So I'm going to come back to this, but first of all, I'm just going to add a little bit of styling to the front specifically. So here I've combined the two classes because these are properties that are going to apply to them both. But then there are some things that only apply to the front or only to the back. So for example, the front had that image. So I'm going to say background, uh, background image, and I'm going to load this in. So the image is going to be from Unsplash. It's just going to be a random image. We'll go HTTPS source.unsplash.com forward slash random. And then you specify the size in pixels. So I already have a size here. It's 350 by 500. That's how big my container for it is. So I'll just say 350 by 500. And there you go. 
as soon as I save that, you can see this has appeared and then the text is underneath. And the reason for that is it's essentially taking the front and the back as individual divs and stacking them underneath each other. Of course, the card is going to have to have these on the reverse of each other. So we'll come to that in a second. I'm just going to add a little bit more styling to this front and back, first of all. So I've got a height and a width. Let's just add a border radius as well here. Border radius of 2 rem. So you'll see these ends round off. And then let's add a little box shadow to it as well, just to give it a slight 3D effect. So I've got 0, 0, 5 pixels, 2 pixels, RGBA, 50, 50, 50. And then I'll give it a little bit of transparency. So that's what the A is for. And now you can actually see what's going on here. So I've got one card up here and then another card or rather the outline of it underneath it. So to get these cards to be sitting on top of each other, I need to go to the card div and say position is relative. Then if I go into the front and back classes and set their position to absolute, well, they're just gonna move on top of each other. So now it kind of looks like one card, but really is the front and the back both in the same place. And the next thing, I don't like having this all on the top left, so I'm going to center it in the middle of the body. Now, the body has this container in it, so what I can do is go into the body and say display flex. And once I've done that, I can then position things on the screen. So I can say justify content center. And it's going to move it to the middle and align item center. And because I've given it a height of 100 uh, VH, when I align items, it's going to go into the middle of the page. Now I want to add in that hover effect. So we'll go into the card here and I'll say card hover. And when you hover the mouse over it, first of all, I want to set the cursor to a pointer. So that it goes into a little hand. And then I want to transform it. So I'll say transform rotate Y. And you got different options here, but I'll go with rotate Y 100 degrees. And now when I hover over it, it happens in an instance. There's no animation yet, but you can see it just flips. So let's add in that animation. If I go back into the card, I can add a transition here. So I'll say transition, transform, and the duration for this will be 1500 milliseconds. So now it's a smoother transition. So it actually looks more of an animation. Now one little bug that you might notice here is if I move my mouse around within it quite quickly, it just gets stuck and gets a little bit jittery. That's because I'm applying my hover effect to the card and then I'm trying to rotate the card. So what I need to do instead is apply this hover effect to the container of the card because that's fixed, that doesn't rotate. So let's change this to say container, but it's still the card that I want to modify. Well, I'm going to add that in here. So what essentially what I'm saying is I'm looking for a hover on the container, which will then apply these to the card. So if I save this now and I move the mouse around, nothing else happens. So it gets rid of that kind of jitteriness. Next, I want to actually style the back of the card. So let's target the back and we'll give it a background color. So we'll go with 3A, 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 save that. And of course, you're actually, what you're seeing here is the text that says back of card, but I shouldn't really be able to see that because all I should be seeing here is the front of the card. So I need to start with the back flipped over. So I need to say transform, rotate Y by 180 degrees. So this way, the back of the card is already facing, well, backwards. It's already flipped over. But I don't really want to be able to see the back of the card. So I need to go into the section here and make sure that I hide the back faces of both of those cards. So we'll say back face visibility is hidden. So now when I've saved this, you can see that the back is no longer visible. So all I'm seeing is the front of the card. Now you would think that when I hover over it, the back would come up, but it isn't. It's just giving me a mirror of the front. So to fix that, there's one more thing we need to add in here. And within the card class, I just say transform style, preserve 3D. So now rather than just flipping this back and forth, or essentially mirroring the top face, it's actually gonna treat it more of a 3D object and it's going to properly flip them over, hiding the front and showing me the back. And there we go. So now it's properly flipping over and we're separating the front from the back. Now let's just style the back a little bit so it doesn't look uh, ugly like that. So I just want to put that text into the middle. I'm going to set this to Flexbox by saying display flex. Flex direction is going to be column so that I can stack my H1 and P on top of each other. And we'll say justify content center. 
and align items center. Save that. Okay, that's a bit better. Let's just add a little gap in there as well. Gap of five rem. Okay, that's looking a lot better. Now, before I close this out, there's one more thing that I want to add. So at the moment, when I hover over this, it's not really much of a 3D effect. You can kind of see that the image just gets compressed into the middle and then opens out again. So what you can add in here in the container class is a perspective value. So if I add a perspective of say 500 pixels and hover over it again, it gives more of a 3D image. So its perspective essentially is giving you an impression of being a certain distance away from the screen. So if I set this to like a low value, like 100 pixels, well, it just goes straight through the screen. So if I increase this, say 800 pixels, it looks a lot better and you're actually getting more of a proper 3D effect now. And you can do all sorts of these transitions. So you could either say, keep that rotate Y, but also add another one. So we'll go over rotate Z and I need to make sure I need to do the same with this card here. So if I save that now, it's going to do this kind of weird backflip almost. So really, you can just mess around with these and add all sorts of funky effects to it. But that's the gist of it, and that's how you set up a flip card effect. So I hope you found that useful, and thanks for watching.